All right. Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's uh, start our Sunday Gita class with some Gita Dhyanam mantras. Om Parthaye Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayan Swayam Vyase Nagratitam Puran Munina Madhye Mahabharatam Advaitam Ritvarshini Bhagavati Mashta Dashadhyayani Ambutvam Anusandhami Bhagavat Gita Bhavadveshini Namo Astute Vyas Vishal Buddhe Pul Arvind Ayat Patra Neta Yena Tavya Bharat Tail Purna Prajvalito Gyan Mea Pradipaha Parpan Pari Jatae Totra Vetra Ekapane Gyan Mudrae Krishnae Gita Amritu Henamaha Sarvop Nishado Gavo Dogada Gopal Nandana Parto Vatsa Sudir Bogata Dugdam Gita Amritam Mahata Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kansachanur Mardanam Devaki Parmanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Kuram Bhishma Drone Tata Jadra Chalaga and Harni Lotpala Shalle Gravati Kripen Vahani Karnain Vela Kula Ashavatam Vikarn Gormakra Duryodhan Avartani So Tirna Kalu Pandway Ran Nadika Vartaka Keshava Para Shari Vatsaroja Malam Gita Arthgantotikam Nana Kyanak Kesaram Harikathasam Bodhan Abodhitam Loke Sajan Shat Padere Hereha Pepe Manam Muda Buyad Bharat Pankajam Kalimal Patwansi Nashreyase Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langya Tegirim Yat Kripatamam Vande Parmanand Matum Yam Brambarun Indre Rudra Murtahastun Vanti Divyestave Vede Sang Padkramupanish De Gayanti Yam Samaka Diana was titat gatin manasapa shanti yam yogino. Yes, yantam navidusur asurgana. Deva eat a smain of a home. These days we are trying to go through chapter sixteen. Dev asur sampad vibhag yoga. So Lord Krishna has given us in detail the qualities of the devatas, those are called divine qualities. And now he is telling us uh, the flaws in a asuric person too. Okay? And nobody is completely divine and nobody is completely demonic. In our self, we got to just see how we can reduce the demonic qualities and move towards the divinity. That's why this, in detail, he's telling us about the demonic. How a demonic personality in us, treats other people, looks at the material wealth also, looks at the goal of life also, so that we can just pay more attention to it. So we ended our last week class with verse number 17, where he said, self-conceited, stubborn, filled with pride and intoxication of wealth, they perform sacrifices. Sacrifice means the yagyas, in name only out of ostentation, contrary to scriptural ordinance. So they will do, because we know that ever since we were little, we were told to do religious rituals also. But if they just, we do it only for the name only, then it does not purify us. Okay, we got to perform our yagyas also, our worships also to purify our lower self, our ego. That's the reason we do it, so that we really get to know who we are. So now let's start the class with verse number 18. So the, these personalities, how they fall lower and lower each day, because we know that going down is easier, moving up is hard. So that's why he is warning us actually, warning us so that we don't slip down. Ahankaram balam darpam kamam krodham cha samshrita maam atam pardeheshu pradvishantaha abhyasuyaka Ahankaram egoism, balam power, darpam the heartiness, kamam the lust, krodh anger, cha means end. Samshrita, taking refuge. 
Mom means me, Atam par deheshu, in their own bodies and in those of others. Pradvishantaha, hating, abhyasuyaka, malicious people. So given over to egoism, power, haughtiness, lust, and anger. These malicious people hate me in their own bodies and in those of others. We all know that once the egoism takes possession of an individual, that person steadily sinks to the ugliest depths of animalism. So that's why over here, Lord Krishna is enumerating the inner contents of such a person, full of egoism and a brute strength. See, strength is needed to live this life, but when it becomes a brute, it hurts others. Arrogance, passion, and anger. Even one of these qualities or characteristics, I should say, can pull a person down to the depths of depravity. But Lord Christian is giving us these qualities all at once. Because they are almost like they, they just encourage the other qualities also. Ego person, the egoistic person will be angry too. Will use that brute strength also. So not only that this person got these qualities, but uh, has faith in these qualities. That without these qualities, I cannot succeed. So this person struggles to discover his fulfillment only in the expression of these qualities. So that means thinks that these qualities are so important to be successful in life. And the consequence of this is that the person does not see the God or the divine, the divinity in himself or in others also. So these attitudes, we have to look into our own life, in our own personality. Because sometimes in order to satisfy the low urges of egoism, we just disregard the divinity in us. And that's what he's talking about. The divinity in us and the divinity in others. That's what mom means over here. So whenever these unethical values, immoral intentions, they start to choke the great melody of life. We just keep on working hard, but it's almost like a purposeless exertion. We shatter peace in our mind. We lose the contentment within and we affect the other people also. The people will, we live with, the people we work with also. So continuation of that, he says, Tan aham dvishantaha kruran sansar eshu nar adhman kshipami ajram ashubhan asurishu ev yonishu. Tan means those. So those demonic personalities. Aham means I. Dvishantaha, the hating ones. See, dvishanta word is dvish. Kururan, cruel, sansar eshu in the worlds. Nar adhaman, worst among men. Kshipami, I hurl. Ajasram, forever. Ashubhan, impure. Asurishu, of demons. Ev means only yonishu in wombs. These cruel haters. So haters means they hate me, the divinity, in themselves and in others also. These cruel haters, worst among men in the world, I hurl these evil doers forever in the womb of the demons only. So these qualities in us, 
they do not keep us at the same place. It's not that once we are a human being, we can stay as a human being. We can even go lower than human beings. We are here to rise up. But if we don't pay attention, if we don't work on ourselves, we we'll, can definitely go down. So that's why his, he said that they are malicious and cruel. So malicious against the dignity of themselves and cruel to the living beings around. So Lord Krishna says that perpetually I throw them into the wombs of demons, lower and lower. So over here, Lord Krishna is identifying himself with the law of action and reaction. So this is a universal law. So according to our actions, we'll get the rewards of the punishments. Wrong actions leave behind wrong tendencies and propelled by such negative tendencies, the personality in an individual after his death will go to that kind of existence. Because life is not only few decades long as we know. Okay. So asuric individual should discover his fulfillment only in an asuric environment. So the law of action and reaction orders that such cruel people again and again reach similar wombs until the sheer horror of their experiences brings home to them. And one day there will be a sudden realization and hopefully they will recognize the divinity. Because Atma is there, that spark of God is in them also, but they have just not paid much attention to it. Okay, no matter how low of your personality is, the God element is still in there. And continuing with this, he says, Asurim Yonim Apanna, Muda Janmani Janmani, Maam Aprape Ev Konte, Tatahayanti Admam Gatim. Asurim Dimanik Yonim Om Apanna entering into Muda deluded Janmani Janmani birth after birth. So there's no set number of births. It could be countless births. Janmani Janmani. Ma means me, a prapi, not attaining. Ev means still, Komtye. That's it, Arjuna. Tataha, then that. Yanti, they fall into. Admam, lower. Gatim, the condition or the path. Entering into the demonic wombs and deluded in birth after birth. Not attaining to me. They thus fall, O oh, Arjuna, into a condition still lower than that. Okay? So we can go up as much as we can reach to that divinity. But downward also, there are several steps we can go to. So that's why he said still lower than that. Okay. So the tracing the line of fall of an asu type of a person, Shri Krishna is telling us this. So repeatedly doing the negative actions we can further keep on slipping down. And whatever we did before, the fact of that is we are here now. And whatever we do now, if we still not wake up, we can even go further down. So life after life into the demonic environment. That's why it's said that if we are, we recognize this, even a little bit we recognize the divinity in us and in others. That means it is the effect of a, some good karmas. Remember that. To be in a human body, to be interested in learning more of this and making an effort to rise up, that means we are reaping the rewards of some very good karmas. We should not let it go waste because otherwise the climb Definitely is difficult, but slipping down is very easy. So that's why he says slowly they sink lower and lower to reach the bottom grades of beings. So divine, divinely good and the 
diabolically fallen. So right now he's just uh, uh, warning us towards this. Okay. So it's like almost a very strong advice he's giving to the entire mankind through Archa. Okay. None is eternally condemned, nor does one deserve a perpetual hell. Remember that. We always have the always have a chance. Do we choose that or not? Do we choose to move up or do we want to just keep on sliding down? In describing the technique of hastening our evolution, Lord Krishna says, now it's, it's almost like he's condensing it all. We cannot remember all of this, but he says, at least remember this. So triple gate to hell he talks about. These three things we should always remember. Trividham narkasyidham dwaram nashnam atmana kamaha krodha tatha lobha tasmat etat trayamtya jeta Trividham triple three narkasya of hell idam this dwaram gate nashnam destruction atmana of the self. Okay. So the self doesn't mean the self of the, like a atma, the soul. This, this really means the lower self, the self which we identify with right now, the jivani. Kamaha, lust, krodha, anger, tatha also, lobha, greed, tasmat. Therefore, etat this, treyam tri, tyajet, one should abandon. These three are the gates of hell. Destructive of the self, <coughs> lust, anger, and greed. Therefore, one should abandon these three. So he is describing the origin of the demonic disposition and pinpoints lust, anger, and greed as the three causes for it. Together, lust, anger, and greed are the foundations from which the demonic vices develop. So there are many, many vices we talked about, but this is the basis. They fester in the mind and make it a suitable ground for other vices to take place. Calm, growth, and love. And we are familiar with these three quite a bit. So three gateways to hell, he says. Earlier in the same chapter, he described hell and heaven are the conditions created by the mind only. They are merely subjective experiences in life. Three false values, they are the main causes of the problem. So desire, anger, greed. That's why in a Karam Yog section also, he talked about desireless action and egoless perfection. Because wherever there's a desire, anger is a natural corollary. We know that. And this, whenever we talk about desires, like a selfish desire, first we got to weed out the selfish desire. Thoughts constantly flying from an individual towards an object of gratification is called desire. And when the steady flow of these thoughts, possessions are deflected by some ob obstacle, then the thoughts which come up, they are called anger. So desire is also thoughts. When the desires don't get fulfilled, sure, anger is there. So in other words, when there's a disappointment in the gratification of the desires, we revolt. There's a revolt in our mind. And a consequence of that revolt is anger. Anger. So anger is the storm arising in our mind at a disappointment of a desire. Something did not get fulfilled, that's anger. But on the other hand, if our desire gets fulfilled, 
then there's a greed. We want more of it. Greed. So with that greed also, the inner peace is gone. We are never satisfied. We always want more and more and more. So greed is a sense of dissatisfaction, constantly pursuing and poisoning the sense of satisfaction. Okay. So that's why Lord Krishna is telling us to follow this discipline. And right now we need to follow it. It's not after we fulfill all of our desires. Because the desires are not fulfilled, we are unhappy. If the desires are fulfilled, we become greedy. So he's just telling us, be careful. So very logically, he's trying to, and in a very summary form, he is telling us, just remember these gateways to hell. Calm, growth, and love. So he says, therefore, one should forsake these three. Tasmat etat trayam tyajet. Very beautifully, he is telling us that. And then, in the next verse, he is praising the renunciation of ego, anger, and greed. If we can renunciate, what happens? Eteiv muktaha konte tamodvare tribhinara acharti atmanahashreya tatayati paramgatim. Ete, from this, vimuktaha, liberated, ponte, arjuna, tamo dware, gates to heart, darkness. Tamo means darkness, dwar means the gate. So gates to darkness. Three bhi, three, nara, the men or the people. Acharatihi, practices. Atmanaha, own, shreya, what is good. Tataha, then, Yati goes to Param, the Supreme. Gati means the goal. A person who is liberated from these three gates to darkness. Tam, Krodh and Lob. O Arjun, practices what is good for him. And thus goes to the Supreme Goal. So we got to avoid these three gates because these gates will take us towards the hell. But where should we go? It's almost like if somebody says, don't eat junk food, you will ruin your health. Then we like to know what should we eat. Healthy food and what is that healthy food? So that's what is telling us that overcome the strong temptations of the sense objects, the mind and intellect should recharge the individual's inner abilities. And that's how we strive hard to move towards the divinity. So a person who's avoiding these three gates of darkness, because we are convinced now, because he has mentioned many times that they will sure lead you to a deeper and deeper confusion despairs and ultimately to a subhuman level of existence. Practice what is good. Shreya, that is the word, Shreya. See, when the materialistic yearnings diminish, the intellect is freed from material mode of passion. And it's drawn towards the Shreya path. Shreya word is, uh, comes in the Upanishads also. The people who are attracted to Shrey path, that is a path of enlightenment, they open up and move towards the Supreme Goal. So it's like they're looking for something which is good for us in the long run. See, there are two words in the scriptures, pray and Shrey. Pray is something which is pleasing to our senses. Something which is pleasing to our senses and we enjoy right away. But in the long run, it's not good for us. Shrey is a, could be hard work right now, but in the long run, it's good for us. That's the Shrey. So that's why he's saying practicing what is good for us. Okay. There is actually, there's no 
equivalent term in english parshre because it does not mean good just good it is definitely has a very deep and wide import this term shre so shre when practiced not only brings happiness to the practitioner but also contributes much to the well being of the people around him so it is almost like a light which is shining through this person which will help this person also and wherever that person goes will carry that torch of light so progressing in the right direction the individual goes to the goal supreme that's what he says tataha yati param gatim we all know this development cannot take place overnight there is no miracle about it so we have to definitely practice it so this verse explains the seeker what is to be avoided and also what to be practiced so avoiding the dissipation of our energies because whenever there is a selfish desires anger greed we are dissipating our energy but at the same time how can we create any positive development in ourselves that's what he's talking about with this shrey world the positive achievement will definitely help us and help others also and what is this positive practice in the verse number 23 ya shastra vidhim utsrij vartate kam karta na sa siddhim avapnoti na sukham na pram gatim ya minsu shastra vidhim the ordinances of the scriptures shastra vidhim utsrij having cast aside vartate acts kam karta under the impulse of desire no means not so means he siddhim perfection avapnoti he attains na sukham not happiness na param not supreme gati means goal he who having cast aside the ordinances of the scriptures acts under the impulse of desire does not attain perfection nor happiness nor the supreme goal so in other words lord krishna is telling us that scriptures are the guide maps given to us humans on the journey towards enlightenment scriptures because scriptures provide us with knowledge and understanding they give us instructions on what to do and what not to do these instructions are of two kinds what we need to do they are like a directives to perform they are called vidhi and that's why this word shastra vidhim and second word is nished directives not to perform or certain activities which are bad for us nished don't do that do this so that's why lord krishna is just telling us very clearly live a life according to the ordinances of the scriptures we got to move towards the right direction because if the energy is misused the chances are that we would dash ourselves down with a mightier bump to the depths of a miserable life when we study the purans or a very familiar epic ramayan your you know ravan so ravan and other asuras of the purans those are the typical examples of personalities that performed penance they did the tap they accumulated lot of inner dynamism also but even after that there was a self destruction for them and a destruction of the people around them also so that's why scriptures tell us to avoid such a calamity at any cost so that's why these last two verses they are like a warning for us 
He who disobeys the Shastra and acts under the impulse of desire, such a person stands to gain no benefit at all, cannot move towards the right direction. Okay? And Shastra does not mean just the rituals. That doesn't mean Shastra. Rituals are only training. The Shastra is, this Bhagavad Gita is a Shastra. The textbooks discussing the theory of truth, which is called Brahm Vidya, and the technique of self-perfection are called Shastra. See, just like we, Yoga Darshan we study, that's a Shastra. Bhagavad Gita is a Shastra. Upanishads are Shastra. That's where we learn about this ultimate goal. So Gita is a philosophical poem. There's a, in a detail, Lord Vishen again and again tells us what to do, what to stay away. What can take you towards the ultimate goal and what can take you towards the downward road also. So in this particular verse, he says, do not act under the impulse of desire. Okay. And we have studied earlier that anger is a product when the desire is throttled. Anger. And greed is a logical sequence when a desire has been fulfilled. Okay, so we got to always remember that what kind of a desire I have? Is my desire sattvic? Because as long as we have a mind, we will have a desire. But remember, sattvic or not. And even the sattvic, we got to make it more and more selfless. Selfless. Okay. So naturally, Lord Krishna contrasts the way of life advocated in Gita with our ordinary ways of life. Because normally we say, no, my desires, I work hard. I can fulfill my desires. But Lord Krishna says, if you live a life like this, you will attain, if you are just running after the desires, you will attain neither joy, nor success, nor your goal. Goal means the ultimate goal of life, the purpose of life. So propelled by desires, coaxed by greed, torn by anger. We all know that individual comes to live a life of restless agitation. Such a person cannot feel any happiness, attain any cultural development. And the natural conclusion will be, we see in the last verse over here. Verse number 24. Tasmat Shastram Parmanam Te Karye Akarye Vyavastito Gyatva Shastra Vidhanuktam Karam Kartum Ih Aharasi Tasmat, therefore, Shastram, the scriptures, Parmanam, authority. Te means they, Karye Akarye Vyavastito, in determining what ought to be done and what ought not to be done. Kari and Akari, what to do and what not to do. Gyatva, having known Shastra Vidhanuktam, what is said in the ordinance of the Shastra, the scriptures. Karam means action, Kartum to do, Ih, Ih means here in this world, through this body. Arasi, shoot. Therefore, let the scriptures be your authority in determining what ought to be done and what not to be done. Having known what is said in the ordinance of the scriptures, you should act here in this world. So therefore, that's a key word over here, therefore. So that means the right conduct in life can be determined only when the individual has the correct knowledge of what is to be pursued and what is to be avoided. So the grand road to truth is the same for all. So Shastras are declared by those who have traveled this road. Many times. And when the Rishis supply us with a map of the road to perfection, we must pursue the path faithfully. 
That's why it's so important to study the scriptures. If we have never studied the scriptures, never understood the scriptures, so then we really don't know what path to walk on. Because over here he says, having known, gyatva. First he says, therefore. Then in the second line he says, gyatva, having known. So before setting out on a pilgrimage to that goal, every seeker is required to study intelligently the scriptures. Okay. So in those scriptures, we see the reports left for our guidance by those who have successfully walked the path earlier. The correct knowledge is needed. A clear intellectual vision of the goal and the direction in which we are moving. Because this path is definitely long. So we got to know Whose footsteps we are walking on? What is the map we are following? Because there are some unavoidable prerequisites for a seeker also. So in this verse, Lord Krishna is driving home the point by stating that the absolute authority will ascertain properly of any activity or lack of it are the Vedic scriptures. Because even uh, sometimes uh, the well-intentioned people will say, I don't care for the rules. I follow my heart and do my own thing. It's okay to follow the heart, but how can we be sure that our heart is not misleading us? That's why this common saying, the road to hell is paved with good intention. It is always wise to check with the scriptures. Then we don't make a mistake. Whether our heart is truly guiding us in the proper direction or not. So use that also, but definitely check with the scriptures. Manu Samriti says, Bhutam bhavyam bhavishyam cha sarvam vedat prashyate. See, Shrutis are the prime scriptures. Samritis are the secondary scriptures. So Manu Samriti is one of the secondary scriptures which said that the authenticity of any spiritual principle of past, present or future, Bhutam Bhavyam Bhavishyam, must be established on the basis of Vedas. Vedas. Sarvam Vedat Prashyati. We should definitely act. That's why he says, Karam kartum e aharasi. You should act here. Naturally, Lord Krishna closes this chapter with the injunction that we all must act. Don't be lazy. But act without desire, selfish desire, anger, or greed. This is the right way of actions. So if you don't remember anything else from this chapter, these three gateways to hell, Kam, Krodh and Log, and at the same time, we should devote some time studying the scriptures. And that's what we are doing in these classes. Every day there should be some time spent looking through these scriptures. What kind of a guidance we are getting? What are we supposed to do and what are we supposed to avoid? So this chapter ends here. So next week we'll start with the Arjun's questions. Beautiful question he asks. That if somebody doesn't even have gotten a chance to study the scriptures, what should that person do? So we'll look at it, how Lord Krishna answers that. And the title of that chapter is Shraddha Treya Vibhag Yoga. That is chapter number 17. So let's uh, stop this class over here. Om Purnam Madha Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachyate Purnasya Purnam Adaye Purnam Eva Vasheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om. Thank you very much.